All right, this video is for uh, the daily algebra kids um, for skills practice on just a few things. I'm only going to do a couple of these videos. Um, one of them is going to be for finding the line of best fit, and then check out the ne um, next video for um, some of the data pieces and probability. Um, so anyway, here is uh, the second data unit on um, finding the line of best fit. And I want to talk to you if you need just a little bit more practice on finding the line of best fit than the other videos that we had, and this might help you out. Feel free to print off the skills practice that's blank and follow along, and then you can try C like we normally would in class, but on your own. And then you can check with the key posted. For the first question, it says choose two points on the graph so that the line through them will closely represent the pattern of all the points on the graph. And when you draw your line, what you want to do is make sure that your line flows with the pattern of the data. So you want your line to go down as it goes to the right. And you want to find a couple points so that when you connect them, there are about half of the points that go through um, half of the points that will be above the line and half of the points that will be below the line. So as I'm kind of looking at my paper here, as I'm looking at my a couple points that if I would connect them, roughly how many points would be below? Um, if I use these two points that I just happened to pick, I'll have one, two, three, four, five points below. And if I look above one, two, three, four, five, six, there must be an odd number of points and that would be a pretty decent line. So I'm gonna draw a line through these two points and I'll show you which, which two that I picked. So the point that I picked was four comma two on this side, and the point that I picked on this side was negative three comma six. And again, I just picked two points that seemed to flow through the data, and when I connected them, uh, half the points roughly were above the line and half the points were below the line. Now as I'm going to um, look at my picture, I'm going to use these two points and calculate the slope. So my slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is my first point, so x1, y1, and this is my second point, x2, y2. And if I plug in my points based on this formula, I'm going to have 2 minus 6 over 4 minus negative 3. 2 minus 6 for the top is going to be negative 4. 4 minus negative 3 is going to be positive 7 for the bottom because when you subtract a negative, you add. And this is going to be my fraction for my slope. Now using point slope formula, we're going to find the equation of our line. And point slope formula is y minus y1 equals m and in parentheses x minus x1. You have to pick one of these two points. Now it does not matter which one that you pick, but in your point slope form, you only get to pick one. I'm just gonna pick the one that has no negative signs just for me to be a little bit easier. But again, it does not matter which one you pick. So using the slope that we just found for M and using this point, I'm gonna have Y minus the Y value of my point equal to my slope and then x minus the x value of that point. That's the point slope formula of the line that you drew. And then it says transform that line into slope intercept form. So you're gonna take two steps. Number one, step number one is distribute your slope to your x and to your negative four. And then the second step after that will be to solve for y. So you have y equals. If I distribute my slope, I'm gonna have y minus two equal to negative four over seven x plus, because a minus times a minus makes a positive, now four times four, I'm gonna view this as four over one. When you multiply fractions, go straight across. Four times four is 16 for the top of your fraction. Seven times one is seven for the denominator of the fraction. Now I need to add two to this side over here. Now if I'm adding a fraction and a whole number, I need to convert so that I have common denominators. This two is really a two over one, and I'm gonna be adding it to this fraction over here that has a denominator of seven. So what I need to do is create a common denominator. So if this denominator is one to make it the same, I need to multiply by seven. But if I change the bottom, I need to also change the top. So really when I'm adding two, it's the same as adding 14 over seven. So I'm gonna take this fraction, 16 over seven, and add it to this fraction over here, and that will be the complete line. 
y equals that slope that we had, negative 4 over 7x, and now when I add these two numbers together, 16 and 14, I get 30 over 7. This is the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So you have your slope here, so you go down 4, right 7, down 4, right 7 as you connect your points on your line, and the y-intercept would be at 30 over 7, which would be roughly, should be a little bit more than 4. 30 divided by 7, that's right, a little bit more than 4, so in between 4 and 5. Now the next question down here at the bottom says that you have a school cafeteria recording the number of students in the cafeteria and the number of hot lunches that were purchased. It says here number of students and if you look at your picture over here number of students is our x axis label which means these are going to be the x values of my points. Number of hot lunches is on the y axis which means this list is going to be the y value of those points. What we're going to do is graph all of these points on this grid over here and um, I'm going to do this as fast as I can. If you want to pause the video and do it yourself or scroll forward, please don't hesitate to do so. Um, I do not have in my background editing of video knowledge and so I'm just going to kind of go through this slowly. But please, please feel free to fast forward if you want to do this part on your own. So 150 and 120. It's my first point, 275 and 150. This one I'm going to have to estimate a little bit. 315, again, it looks like these are going by 25, so you might have to estimate some of the points in between 300 and 325 and up to 208. 410 and 270. Let's see, 460, so a little bit more than 450, and up to 300. Five hundred and three sixty, and 530, 350, and 575. 400. So now as I'm looking at those points on my grid, they're going up as they go to the right. I want to pick two points that if I connect them with a line, roughly half of the points would be above the line and half of the points would be below the line. Now you have a lot of choice here and it doesn't matter which two points you pick, you just want to pick two so that roughly half of your data will be above the line and half below the line. So I might want to do, I'm trying to kind of play here. I might pick this point here and the very last point there. That may be too many below the line. What if I do that one there? That might be a little better. Okay, I'm going to pick this point here and this point here. Now if I connect those together, Looks like I have roughly one, two, maybe three points below the line, and one, two, roughly three points above the line. That one was a little bit hard for me to pick. I hope it was just hard for you. And now what I'm gonna do is look at the two points that I selected and identify what those are. I picked the one that was a little bit more than 300, which would have been this point, and I picked the point that was a little bit more than 500, so this point here. So the two points that I picked for my equation were 315, 208, and 530, 350. I'm going to use those two points to calculate the equation of the line of best fit. And just like I did up here, I'm going to go through these three steps. I'm going to find the slope, write down the point slope form, and transform it into slope intercept form of a line. So down here, the two points that I picked are 315 and 208 and then the point 530 and 350. This is an X, this is a Y, these are my first ones, and X2, Y2. So my slope is going to be 350 minus 208 
divided by x2, which is 530 minus 315. You're gonna need a calculator. So I'm gonna take, for the numerator, 350 minus 208, and for this I get 142. The denominator, 530 minus 315, so 215 on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is round this to a decimal place. So 142 divided by 215, and I get a decimal of 0.66. Now what I'm gonna do is point slope formula. So pick one of these two points, it doesn't matter, and your slope and plug it into point slope. So y minus my y1, which is 208, equal to my slope, 0.66, and then in parentheses, x minus x1 or minus 315. Now what I'm gonna do is distribute my slope to my x and to my 315, and then I'm gonna solve for y by adding 208. So here I'm gonna have y minus 208 is equal to 0.66 times x and 0.66 times negative 315. I get negative 207.9. Now I'm gonna solve for y by adding 208 to both sides. So plus 208 and plus 208. So I will have y equals 0.66x. Now I'm gonna take that answer that I had and I'm gonna add 208 to it. And I get a y-intercept of 0.1. This would be the equation of the line that passes through those points. Now it's harder for me to see this y-intercept because my y-axis starts at 100, so it, I can't really see that point one kind of like I saw my y-intercept here, so I don't want you to be alarmed there. The last question here says, uh, letter C, use your equation to calculate how many hot lunches will be purchased if 700 students were in the cafeteria. The number of students you have is the X. So in your equation here, I want you to substitute in 700 for the number of students, which is in place of that X. So I'm going to solve for 0 0.66 times 700, 700, and then add 0.1. 0.66 times 700, I get 462, and if I add 0.1, I'd have 462.1 students. I'm gonna round to the nearest whole students, so I'm sorry, not, not students, I'm sorry, hot lunches, number of hot lunches served, I'm just gonna round to the nearest whole number of hot lunches, roughly 462 hot lunches for that day. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video. I want you to try on your own skills practice B and check it with the key. And then if you need more additional practice, please feel free to go ahead and then try skills practice C. The keys will be posted online. Hope you're having a great day.